you happy people, special Breaking It All Down vlog with my pickups from Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2016. This video is coming out two weeks after Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2016, but I figured having an episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives by the end of the month would be kind of a bigger thing. So, anyway, let's talk about what I picked up. First off, whenever I go to Portland Retro Gaming Expo, I've every year been hunting down interesting retro import games, particularly games which I can play on my Retron 5 with the use of translation patches. This year is no exception. So, I picked up the Saga series of games. Romancing Saga 1, 2, and 3 for the Super Famicom. Inbox, manuals, and everything. Now, of these, one has a complete translation, two a little less. Uh, it actually, ironically, has had a uh, full translation on mobile recently but that said there have been translation patches in the works i suspect that how that even if the script if the script wasn't finished having the script from the uh, mobile release would certainly help streamline the process somewhat and there have been more than a few cases where pickup import games thought well maybe there was an import a uh, patch mostly done on the way out and found that and while there wasn't one then there was one came out shortly afterwards, that's what the case with Dark Half, which if you watched my Extra Life live stream last year, you saw me play, which is an interesting game, very fun. Then there's this game, it appears to be a title in the in something spread to the Super Robot Wars series, I apologize for the crinkling. Um, I actually looked this up now at the convention, I don't have the name in front of me right now, you just have to not bring that up. A, B, R, J. The name of the game is Battle Robot Retsuden for the Super Famicom. And I believe this game... There's not a translation in the works. There appears there is a certain popularity to it. It's an isometric turn-based strategy game very much along the lines of Super Robot Wars. Going from the Giant Bomb database... The featured series shown includes Zeta Gundam, Char, um, the film Shars Counterattack, Combat Mecha Zabungul, and Aura Battler Dumbin, basically giving us th four Tomino. Actually, like this is like the Tomino game. The featured series listed from the Giant Bomb have Zeta Gundam, Shars Counterattack, Zabungul, Aura Battler Dumbin, Heavy Metal L Game. Invisible, Invincible Super Superman Zambot 3, and Invincible Steel Man Dytarn 3. Like, pretty much all of those are... Yeah, all of those are Tamino series. Um, several of them are from the... If they're not Gundam, they're Bison Wells. Uh, L Game isn't Bison Wells, but it is somewhat related to five star stories and i believe there's a translation patch for this if not i think there's a fact if there's not there's a playthrough fact to walk you through the game so that looks really fun and i'm definitely looking forward to giving that a shot Hopefully it is good. We'll see if I can... And if it comes nothing else, I'll start hunting down books on learning Japanese and do that. So, a while back at a one of our local game stores, I picked up Colony Wars for the PlayStation. I'm still not a chance to play it yet. But when I got there, I saw that they, they had the Colony Wars series in its entirety. Well, they had Colony Wars 1 at the game store. And I'm missing the last two games, I believe. So I picked up Colony Wars 3 Red Sun and Colony Wars... Do that the glare. Vengeance. So you got to roll out the series. I like me some space simulators. Hang on a second, I'm going to adjust my light here. So there's that. Let's see if, if the uh, system adjusts is focused accordingly. And the last thing I picked up Normally, I don't do upgrades for my for games I have in my library. 
if I have a cart and it works, then I'm fine with that. I may pick up a Repro hard case or something similar for that game. But otherwise, unless it needs like a manual or something, I'll pick up the manual separately. I'm not as big a... I don't care about having the box. I care about having the manual more. So a while back, I picked up most... I've bought console versions of most of the Wizardry games that have gotten console releases. In particular, ones where there is an English translation patch for them if they are not English natively released. Or don't have English language op options. So, the Famicom version of Wizardry 3, or that re uh, Legacy of Legain, which is also Wizardry 2 for the PC. Anyway, that game has natively on the Famicom cart an English language option. Wizardry 5 and 6 for the Super Famicom do not. So, well, Wizard of Wizardry 5 got a U.S. release, and I picked it up a while back. I picked up a nice repro hard case for it, but didn't have a manual. This is notable because lots of console RPGs do in some form or another require a manual so you know what the heck you're doing in the game, what the spells are. In some cases, the weapon damage information is in the manual, so if you want to know whether a weapon purchase is an upgrade or if your characters can equip that weapon and armor, you have to have the manual to know that. So I didn't have the manual. I don't have this for a lot of games. I don't have it for Might and Magic for the NES or for the SNES, Might and Magic 3, so I've been hunting down manuals for these dungeon crawlers. So, I got to Portland Ultra Gaming Expo this year and found Wizardry 5. This was in box... There's a little bit of damage and a little beat up. You can see there's wear and tear on the edges and the middle's a little kind of dented in. It has the game and it has the manual. So having the complete thing in box is kind of a bonus. It's not mint. There was a copy there that was mint and it was $50 and actually $55. I'm like, no, I'm, I don't want a game mint. I don't care about Mint. I play my games. Another thing I picked up is I was in need of a new Genesis cart, Genesis controller. I had an old Genesis controller that I picked up a while back with an old Genesis, but it was kind of beat up. The controllers weren't in the best shape. So, Hyperkin always has a booth at Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and this year is no exception, and they had a new Genesis controller that they're trying out. Now, the Genesis that I have, the controller I have, has turbo. This one does not, but it's okay. Doing the unboxing now. This is the Gen 6 controller from Hyperkin. It is a six-button Genesis controller, which, if you're playing fighting games on the Genesis, you kind of need this. Playing Street Fighter, if you're playing any of the later Mortal Kombat games... Having the extra buttons is important. The, the, the strong, medium, fierce. And that's for punch and kick and that sort of thing. It's important to have those. So. Put this on the box. There's a cable here. Nice little cable. Game port right there. Here's the unit itself. Can I have a chance? This is a total surprise as far as what I'm picking up here because I've had a chance to go hands-on with it at the convention, so I knew what I was getting into. And it has a really nice response on the buttons. It's, I don't know if you can hear that. It's really nice sound on it. Um, the mode button is as a shoulder button up here, which I kind of like. It's, it's not raised. It's flush with the side of the controller. So, you can't actually necessarily press it by accident. I don't think so, unless you're, like, really super getting into it. The D-pad has some nice movement to it. It doesn't feel too mushy. None of the buttons feel really mushy, which is good. That's the one thing I've problem I've had when I've gone shopping for aftermarket Genesis controllers, particularly six-button controllers. The buttons are mushy. The buttons feel mushy. And even if they're, like, super responsive, but still feel mushy, then it feels mushy, then it doesn't work right. You don't have that sense of play. I don't 
know if I'm pushing in enough until I get the response I need on screen. So that is really nice to have. I'm definitely going to use that controller a lot. That's something I'm more likely to use, definitely going to use more with RPGs like Shining in the Darkness or that sort of thing. Not sure how much we use it for brawlers because I like a certain degree of turbo on brawlers. I probably used a bunch of brawlers actually because the turbo controller I have, or the controller I have turbo on, the turbo is always on or it's not. I mean, it'd be turning turbo on and off again with the slider for punch because I don't want to do turbo on jump. There's no good reason to do turbo on jump. Why would you do turbo on jump? Um, so anyway, there's that. So those are my pickups from Portland Richard Gaming Expo. Not a lot this year. The um, kind of a tight budget. The Romancing Saga games probably took up the biggest chunk of cash. This was a pretty good deal. Uh, there were 15 on the list price. I got them, three of them for 40, as opposed to the 45 would have been otherwise. Um, not a big deal, but it was all right. I'm uh, probably going to take my old copy of Wizardry. Just don't really, haven't really played the chance to play yet. I'm going to take that to one of the local independent game stores. We have several. Um, prob I've heard that Retro Game Trader in Beaverton has really good trade-in value, so I'll probably try it out there. And I'll let you know how that goes. Thank you very much for watching. That's my pickups. I'll just be going out first week of November. Next week, well, this weekend... When this goes out, I'll be seeing Doctor Strange. Next week, we'll have my vlog post on that film. And the week after that, we have a new episode of the Legacy of the Force series. We'll be talking about the first chunk of Marvel Star Wars. See you then. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe and get you notified when future episodes come out. And liking lets me know that you enjoyed the episode. The video on the right will be of the previous episode of Nintendo Power Retrospective, if you want to go see it or if you previously that on that show. And the video on the left will take you to the previous episode of Breaking It All Down, while well, you'll get to see what I covered there. And below that will be a link to my Patreon page if you wish to back the show. Backing the show can get you mentioned in the credits, and also, depending on your level of support, you can determine what I do future Let's Plays of on Breaking It All Down and what else I review on that show as well. So go ahead and click on that and back the show. Also, backing the show helps me get the show out more often and improve the production quality of the show, which is good for everybody. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.